Hey everyone, this is Chad, and as promised, I'm doing the L1 removal and solder bridge for Batch 1 and Batch 2 Langmire Pro, Langmire Crossfire Pro owners. If you're interested in watching uh, and you don't have a Batch 1 or Batch 2, that's great, but ultimately, this is for Batch 1 and Batch 2. It's uh, intended to correct electromagnetic interference issues, EMI issues, that some users were having. I didn't have much of that issue, but I went ahead and made the fix anyway. Just trying to be proactive. So here I am uh, filming while my buddy Greg does all the hard work. So let's get started. screws holding it under the case it looks like. We're going to take a picture of where everything's connected. connected to the board. Now we'll need to uh, flip it up here and we're going to need a little Phillips. A little Phillips head. Okay. So we're going to make sure we catch these little nuts as we undo the screws so they don't fall down inside. Four screws holding this. There were uh, four little nylon spacers that sat underneath. So, standoffs, or yeah, little standoffs. So make sure you have those. All right. All right. So we're going to be removing the inductor L1 uh, and link in, link in the video to the post uh, showing where that's at. But uh, you know, ironically, the whole purpose of that inductor was supposed to be to reduce emissions of electronic of noise from the circuit board. Unfortunately, uh, it made a great antenna for picking up the massive amount of EMI that the, or that any plasma cutter throws on. Uh, we're going to be taking that off today. A couple of ways you could replace it. Uh, so they said from the factory they're going to be replacing with a zero ohm resistor. And if you're into soldering in that, right, you can get, you know, off Amazon, you can get packs of resistors. You can get zero ohm resistors um, from there and, uh, and solder them in. But surface mount soldering is a little bit fiddly. So today we're going to be doing what they recommended, just doing a solder ball. Uh, just basically bridging across the two contacts with solder to short them out, right? Which, same thing as the ohm resistor would do. Uh, I'm going to be using a hot air rework station just because I happen to have one uh, today. And, and when you're trying to unsolder both sides of something with, you know, a soldering iron, it's, you wind up chasing it a bit. You're, you're doing, you know, one side then the other, uh, and you have to kind of keep at it a little bit. You can do it. Um, so, you know, if, if that's what you've got available, you can do it. Uh, but, but if you've got access to a rework station, easy, even easier way to, to remove it. So, all right, with that, let's jump in. Oh, there we go. All right, so one thing you will want to have is, I, I have some really long needle nose uh, tweezers here, but any set of tweezers will do just fine for that. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to just take the hot air rework, and I'm going to turn this just a hair. Can you still see it? Uh, and I'm going to try and direct air away from the rest of the components on the board, so I'm not putting unnecessary uh, heat in the board. But there aren't a lot of other components right near here. And it takes a minute to get it hot enough. You should see the solder silver up and turn more shiny metallic when, uh, 
when it gets to temp. And applying a little flex to it. That'll burn that away. Of course, we'll be showing how to do it with a soldering iron. Here we go. All right. All right. So I've got the little inductor here. Probably can't even hardly see that on camera, but uh, that's a piece we don't need anymore. And we're just going to bridge that over with solder in between. Be careful, it's a little hot for a minute. Turn that off. We don't need it anymore. A little quieter in here. Um, I did wind up using a little bit of flux. Uh, Sometimes you can get the uh, the you know you can get the flux from Amazon or whatever. Sometimes when you get a little bit of oxidation um, on the the solder, it, it just facilitates cleaning some of that off, helping it melt off uh, a little bit quicker. Uh, in any case, again, you could do it without it, um, but in this case we uh, have it, so we'll shoot. We'll use it. All right, and then to bridge these two. Um, now we should need to connect these when you're soldering make sure the tip is nice and clean and shiny if it's not if it's all brown and gunky it's oxide layer it's not gonna uh, really let you solder so use a you know a damp sponge or a, a metal sponge like I have here uh, and we're gonna heat it up just a little bit and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a some solder on each pad and then I'm gonna do like a bad soldering job like that so you need a little, a little bit too much solder on and all we've done is we've created a short between those two uh, points. And being uh, all that I am, just knock that little, whoops, see I knocked the bridge off, sorry. So just leave a little bit of solder between uh, both boards so you can see those are now connected. Uh, and we're good to go to uh, wipe the board down and put it back in. So now for putting it back together, let me make sure I have all four of my Screws and nuts here, and uh, three out of four ain't bad as they say, right? Uh, okay, so what we're going to do so we can get the nylon spacers and all of that back on is we're going to put the screws in from the back first. Uh, handy to get some little blue tape or just any kind of tape, and just tear you know four little tabs of it so you can hold them in place and sit it back down. So I'm just going to tear those off. I'm just going to take each of the screws. All right, so again, just have a little patience getting down in here and getting these started, especially if you have uh, big hands, fat fingers like I do. But I'll hold it by the end there and just get it flat and started. Again, we just needed a couple of turns so that the uh, little bolts don't fall out the back side. So that I can make sure I know which cable goes where. So and I'm going to put them back in in the reverse order I took them out in because it seemed to work for getting them out. All right. So this guy plugs in here. And they're all keyed. They have the little uh, clip on one side that goes toward the toward the uh, little plastic wall there, so just make sure they're in right.
Tighten the vat back in. And we should be good to go. No magic smoke. 